Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to those joining us from around the globe. I'm Joyce Gilmore, Webcast Manager at UBM Canon, and I'm welcoming you today to our exclusive webcast sponsored by Palomar Technologies and hosted by EDN and UBM Electronics. The title of today's webcast is Automated Precision Assembly for High Volume HB LED. Our speaker today will be Donald J. Beck, Assembly Services General Manager at Palomar Technologies. Don will spend about 30 minutes in today's webinar exploring the ultimate goal of an automated precision HB LED assembly to blend the quality required to support high reliability with the speed needed to support high volume commercial production. A few short announcements before I turn the presentation over to Don. Palomar Technologies encourages your questions, so please type in your questions into the question box on your console at any time. Remember to click the submit button when you're done. Someone will reply to you by email in a few days. If you're having problems with your audio or your slides aren't advancing, please press the F5 key to refresh your console. For other technical questions, there's a help button at the bottom right corner of your player. Palomar Technologies and EDN both request and encourage your feedback on today's session, so after the webcast, please take a moment and complete the brief feedback survey form. Thank you all for your presence today. And now our presenter, Don Beck. Don? Thank you, Joyce. Today I'll be presenting our assembly methodology for high-volume hybrid LED modules. The process is defined are a combination of what we consider the best of both high-rel and commercial practices. For the uh, webcast agenda, we're going to be reviewing the key objectives, assembly challenges, worldwide assembly costs, assembly overview, process flow, that will include the assembly documentation, incoming inspection, and process inspection, process certifications. I'll then try to anticipate questions, and we'll wrap it up. So we'll be going into key objectives. For high right LED assembly onshore, we want to define why onshore assembly is unique, why onshore assembly makes sense for many U.S. customers, define the basics for supporting the business, define the Palomar technology systems that ensure part quality and on-time delivery. This includes material quality at incoming, process development, process consistency, volume assembly, and high-quality applications. The benefits of onshore assembly, there is little doubt that light engines are assembled offshore, so why would companies want to change? One main reason is intellectual property, then rapid prototype to volume assembly, the ability to quickly react uh, to needed changes, improved communication, access to the product in all stages of assembly, no time loss or delay due to customs, and the ability to perform complex applications and processes by keeping that business onshore. Next, for worldwide assembly costs, Costs for microelectronic assemblies tend to equalize as the complexity increases. For example, we know light engine assembly costs have increased in China as designs become more complex. In 2009, Palomar Technologies conducted a review of LED assembly costs. The assessment was made using a 25 LED light engine, that is 25 LEDs per light engine. This review showed relatively close pricing between U.S. and China, and even showed how Mexico is cheapest of all. For our assembly overview, I should first start by saying that we know not all assemblies require the level of detail uh, presented in this webcast. The, pr the presented process flow is a proven process for Palomar, but not the only way to address these applications. Our main goal is to share our experience and process validation methods. I'll first start by going over uh, the assembly that this process is built around. That is a metal core PCB that replaces mercury lights for common industry lighting and also gas stations. This is a metal core part PCB that is approximately 50 millimeter in diameter. There are 100 one millimeter LEDs per part all are attached using silver epoxy. There's a ring frame that is also epoxy attached, 
and that's used mainly to capture the encapsulation where the phosphorus is uh, mixed into the encapsulation material. The LED process flow, so this is a basic process flow that is intended to define the main assembly steps. In this review, we'll discuss some of the main topics, which include incoming inspection, kitting, pick and place certification, visual inspection, and wire bond certification. Our assembly strategy begins first by validating materials at incoming inspection. We want to verify that the equipment is performing within minimum guidelines, conduct in-process inspection steps to ensure the process is not drift, as well as offline inspections. That strategy helps us to separate material versus equipment issues. So if one buys into that concept, the next thing you'd want to decide is how much money to invest into quality insurance. Obviously, you don't want to define unneeded tests. The goal is to ensure materials meet minimum guidelines from lot to lot before issuing them to the production floor. The way we implement this is by defining incoming inspection and standards for each part and materials. These standards should include automated processes where the recipe never changes, so one would not want to vary process parameters to allow product to pass. However, in some cases, that may be required through MRB. When that happens, those changes should then follow the product through manufacturing. Some examples of these tests would include ICs, where one might attach IC to coupons, perform wire bond tests, passives, we normally don't test passives, but they would be tested in the same way as ICs if that was the case. And adhesives, where you'd want to perform dispense tests from syringe to verify lot to lot and batch to batch consistency. For test or the certification part, in order to facilitate the test, you should define a minimum gold standard. These tests ensure automated equipment meets minimum standards before building deliverable product. That same standard is used to test materials at incoming and equipment certifications. At Palomar, we use a two by two inch gold coupon and believe it should be defined per a material specification or drawing. It's important that since key decisions are made based on that coupon's performance, you wanna make sure it's of known quality. For kitting and build documentation, over the years we have developed our own paperless manufacturing system that communicates with our equipment. This process begins by kitting parts to a traveler. Some of the benefits of the system includes that all information is stored and accessed via a common network. Material inventory and kitting may be performed at any workstation. All work instructions are defined for each operation that can include pictures. Data can be accessed directly from equipment to validate process consistency. When an operator finishes a step or operation, that creates a timestamp so you know how long each operation takes. Also, the fact that I can access the parts from my office or at home can save a lot of time. Adhesive certification. It's been our experience that epoxies can change from lot to lot or even day to day. The certification process documents the parameter changes that are then transferred to production. This is possible by defining minimum standards for each adhesive type. The test consists of dispensing adhesive onto a two by two inch coupon. We then measure dot diameter, grade performance against the defined standards. Any changes that are made are then transferred to the production process and verified on the first real parts that are dispensed. For a component attached certification, the purpose of this certification is to validate pick and place accuracy. We start by loading a calibrated glass die onto the work stage. Using a automated program with pattern recognition, pick the die and place it onto the stage position. Using high mag look down camera, we verify the position of the die using what we refer to as PPAC, or post-placement accuracy check. Using bond data miner tests, detailed are, those tests are detailed and exported to an Excel database that is part of our paperless system. The inspection results are made to ensure the system meets the minimum requirements. This is a standard certification table that is filled out 
upon the completion of the certification process. The results do not mean that one could actually place components this accurately these, since these tests are done using perfect standards. This table is filled out, though, once those tests are complete. For wire bond certification, this test, is again, is performed using a 2 by 2 inch coupon. It's an automated program where the parameters never change. We run a program over the coupon that has at least 50 wires and 10 free air balls. The free air ball monitors the consistency to form a ball, which is the EFO, while the bonded ball diameter monitors the bonding process or force ultrasonics. This may also include destructive tests. For visual and process inspections, so once the process is certified, we define specific checkpoints where the process is stopped and inspected using the equipment camera. This, of course, means that the part doesn't get removed from the process. The operator can decide to either stop or continue based on instructions that are defined in the traveler. So it helps there to have images, pictures, to define what that criteria is. For offline and visual inspection, we perform 100% inspections at the beginning of a new part run and then switch to sampling as the process matures. Typically, that's a 2.5% AQL. However, it's worth noting that visual inspections by a person are only 85% effective. So we try not to rely on visual inspections, offline visual inspections, that is. I'll now go into anticipated questions or wrap this up. One is, how is it possible that U.S. and China can be that close in assembly costs? Most light engines are made in Shenzhen, China, where the labor costs have steadily risen. So as that area has matured, the labor costs have gotten higher. Why are more light engines not assembled onshore? Of course, cost has been the biggest discriminator, uh, but as the complexity increases, the cost differences decrease, so you see more of that business coming back onshore. The fact that IP is safe is one of the main reasons also why a lot of the business is now returning onshore. How long does each certification process take? Depending on the process, each certification takes two to 10 minutes. However, if you simply want to look at the equipment, our systems perform diagnostic tests that evaluate the performance of each motion or servo system. This is a motion validation test that takes about 20 seconds. It looks at hundreds of data points and then grades them. That grading is done based on a green, yellow, or red indicator. We find that consistently catches degrading performance. Does assembly services perform in process or offline visual inspections? We're not a big fans of offline inspections, as I said earlier, since it's not always reliable, and we find most issues can be caught during in-process inspections. Is Palomar Technology Assembly Services paperless software system available for purchase? We'd actually looked into this and found that the software engineering overhead could be significant, so decided not to productize it. However, some Palomar customers today have versions of that system. In summary, when using high-speed automation, one must detect defects as quickly as possible. Testing materials and equipment prior to assembly of deliverable hardware increases quality and reduces manufacturing issues. With the low costs of netbooks and tablets, it should be cost-effective to tie processes or work instructions into a network. This using pictures at this point is very helpful and highly recommended. Also, having the ability to monitor processes and inventory from off-site is very useful. And finally, one cannot rely on visual inspection to maintain quality. In process inspection, part certifications, those things help. Equipment certification and process inspections reduce that need. So I'd like to thank you for the opportunity, and if there are any questions, please contact Palomar Technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for an excellent presentation today. And thank you all for attending today's webcast, Automated Precision Assembly for High Volume HB LED, brought to you by Palomar Technologies and EDN and UBM Electronics.
Today's webcast will be available archived for replay on demand for a full year, and someone will follow up with your questions in the next few business days. Also a reminder, please take a moment and complete our brief feedback survey. On behalf of Don Beck, Palomar Technologies, EDN and UBM Electronics, thank you all for attending and have a great day.